Today, once again, we're going to do a podcast on anxiety. We have done another mini podcast on anxiety, and we had a lot of people comment on that. Apparently, it was very helpful. There's a lot of anxiety going around these days, and people just wanted, could you go over that again? Could you come at it a different way? Can you give us more insight into how to deal with that? Are there other ways to deal with anxiety? So we're going to do some of that today. We may have other follow-up mini-podcasts on anxiety and how to overcome it as well. We'll see how the response is. When we're thinking about anxiety, there are two different circumstances, very different circumstances to think about this in. One of those is we have anxiety in general. We want to do something about it. We want to change it. What are the underlying roots of that anxiety, and how do we prevent the anxiety from getting out of hand? The other is, what happens when anxiety has already reached a peak? How do we deal with it then? I'm already consumed. My mind is racing. Maybe my heart is pounding. How do I deal with anxiety in that case? Do I stop and think about it, or is there other things that we can do? We're going to look at both of those things here in this podcast and or over the next couple podcasts as well. Again, as we said right in the beginning, we've covered this before, so some of the material is going to be somewhat of a repeat, but we're going to try and explain it differently, come at it from a different angle so that maybe you can utilize these tools much better. In that first case of anxiety, where it's something that we have now and then, or maybe we have a fair amount of it, but we're in a decent state, we're thinking about it, and we're looking for what can I do to prevent it in the future? How can I get more to the root of this? Now, in this realm, there are two very different perspectives. They overlap. They very much influence each other. They both have some accuracy. And that is, one of them will say, well, anxiety is biochemical, it's neurological, and we have to take something to change that. The other point of view, and the one that we're addressing it more from here today, is that anxiety is primarily an issue of perspective. It's more psychological, in a sense, if you will. It's how we think about ourselves in our world. And that tends to trigger the change in biochemistry from our point of view. Now, both have some validity. We're not saying this is right and that's wrong. We're just saying in our experience, if we come at it this way, if we really dig into what sets us up for that biochemistry being triggered, that is typically how we think about things, how we represent things in our own psyche, how we picture things, what we tell ourselves, all of that. So that's where we're entering into this. At the root of that perspective, our experience is that anxiety at its core is about how we perceive ourselves relative to our environment relative to whatever it is we get anxious about. And in almost everybody that we have ever interviewed, that we've ever worked with, they think of themselves as smaller than what it is that makes them anxious. If they have a test coming up, they tend to, in their mind's eye, exaggerate that test. Maybe it's an important test, so they make it really big, or maybe they feel really bad about their testing ability, so they make themselves really small, or a hundred variations on those two things. So if we're small and we see the object of our anxiety is really big, it has far more power than us. We feel very diminished. And in that situation, this is like going out and battling giants. Of course, we're going to be anxious. Maybe we have a big presentation and we really see it as bigger than us. Of course, we're going to feel small, anxious, and the fear will come up and our sense of resource 
will diminish. When we're small, it's very hard to think about what can I do? How can I prepare? What do I know? What are my abilities? What is going to give me the capacity to overcome this thing, this presentation, this test, whatever it is? So that big, small thing in our own perception, in our own pictures, in our head, that's right at the root. Now, oftentimes, unless we slow down and sort of notice the pictures we're making, we blow right by that. We don't even notice that that is what we're doing. And yet that is so essential. We see it again and again and again. So the very first thing we want to do is just pause and go, okay, I'm about to have some anxiety here. I've started to have some anxiety or I might some time in the future or I have in the past. Let me notice how I'm thinking about whatever it is I'm anxious about and how big do I feel relative to that? Almost everybody, as we've said, that we've done this with, and it's been hundreds and hundreds of people, it always comes out the same. What leads us to do that? One of the ways of thinking about that is, well, what if I just make that that thing that I'm picturing as bigger, that test, what if I, in my mind's eye, what if I just make it smaller rather than looming over me? What if I bring it down to desktop, tabletop level, and I see it as, if it's a test, this piece of paper on the desk that I'm going to deal with? Now, people would say, yeah, but the consequences of that test, and then they make that really big. Well, what happens if we also make that smaller so that we can see that we have a capacity that is much greater than whatever it is that we imagine happening in the future, that we have more capacity to generate a future that we want than this particular test and its outcome? What if we can see, oh, there are a lot of ways to get to the outcome I want. Now, some people would say, yeah, but what if it is the big test, the SAT or the MCATs or such a thing? Well, most of those can be retaken. There are other ways to address those kinds of issues. And certainly, we probably can find some exception to anything we say here to what any human being says. Yeah, but what about? Yeah, but what about this? So, in the vast majority of times, this works. Sometimes we have to step into the future where this is already done and we've already found our way to the outcome we want. We've already found the solution and we're looking back and going, oh, I figured out a way to deal with that. I can see that test, that presentation from this future perspective and I can see that that wasn't the be-all and end-all. And a lot of times that helps us get a handle on that and bring that down to size. This makes a huge difference. Let's look at the other side of this for a minute. The other side of it is how we perceive ourselves. So, So often we've been telling ourselves, well, I can't do this, I'm not good at this, or a hundred other things that make us feel diminished, that make us feel smaller? What if we change what we're telling ourselves? Or if we go even more fundamental and we notice, what would it be like if I felt really big, really competent right now? I mean, maybe I don't in the moment, but what would happen if I did? And what happens if we step into that experience and view things from that perspective? So. Then we can, if we're, you know, a giant looking at that, if we're much bigger somehow and we're looking at what before seemed overwhelming, but now we're bigger than that because we made ourselves bigger, that again looks smaller. So we can play on either end of this process, or we can do both. They can certainly work together. That's where we're going. Sometimes we don't know quite how to get there on our own. Sometimes we have to think about, well, I have this friend that's always good at this. 
I wonder what it's like in them. And we step into them. We imagine what it's like looking through their eyes, walking in their shoes, what it's like for them to think about that test or that preparation. And virtually always, we will find ourselves, when we're in them, being much bigger than what it is we're taking on. And then we bring that experience back to ourselves. It's a little bit like stealing our friend's capacity, but in all the right ways. You know, they still end up having it, and now we've borrowed it, and it's ours, and we can make use of that. And this is another way to get at that same thing. Try these things out. See what it does for you. Let us know. Go back and listen to that prior podcast on anxiety. You can search for it on our search bar on our website, learntolearn.org. See where this takes you in your life.